everybody, um, Amanda Hunt here, also known as the Next Gen Librarian. Um, I am currently on spring break and wanted to do a YouTube video talking about ways that I read. It is like the biggest question that I get from people who follow me on Instagram, um, TikTok, and Twitter um, is how do I read so much and um, where do I get all the titles that I do read without breaking the bank. And so uh, today I wanted to take us some time and break it down. Um, a lot of them um, I've learned through the library world, through being on Bookstagram and Book Talk, and um, and I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of all the different ways that you guys can read um, for free, for cheap, and for maybe a little bit more pricey. Um, I am an avid reader, obviously. It's almost my entire personality. Um, so please do not think that um, this is a video telling you that you need to read as much as me. Um, but uh, for those of you that do ask, um, I wanted to have a video available so that you could go back and look at all the different ways um, you guys can get books or have access to books. Because um, I know for everyone it's not... Um, always an easy process. So um, I will be breaking it down, um, like I said, by free uh, ways to read, um, cheaper ways to read, and then ways that I usually am willing to spend a little bit more money each month um, to have access to uh, various platforms. Um, I read any type of um, type of book. So I read physical copies, I read ebooks, and then I also read um, audiobooks. And audiobooks is a newer thing for me. It's something that I started a couple of years ago, right around like during the pandemic. Um, and I was somebody that swore I would never read an audiobook ever. Um, I felt like I could read it faster um, than they could read it to me. Um, and I've definitely built up a quick tolerance to listening at a faster pace on audio. Um, but again, to each their own, um, reading is reading is reading. So, um, but I just wanted to kind of lay that out that all of these will be the various different types of ways to read and access books. Um, so let's get started. So as a school librarian, I'm obviously going to champion uh, libraries in general, meaning the public library is the very first way that I want to talk about ways that you can read for free. Um, so with the public library, everyone thinks it's generally just your physical books. Like you walk in, you look at the shelves, you pick what you want. Um, and that's definitely obviously something that I do um, more so in times that I'm off, like in the summer, when I have time to actually go and read physical books, as those do take me the longest, because I have to remember to take it with me <laughs> when I go places. Um, but um, there are other ways to read with your library um, card that are digital. And I'm going to show um, the Libby app first. Hey everybody, so I was told you I was gonna talk about Libby first. So if you look at the red maroon-ish app that says Libby, I'm gonna click on it. When you first open it, it's gonna take you to your loan shelf. Um, so you can see you know, the loans at the top, the holds that you have, and any tags that you've, you've set aside. If you click on the three lines in the middle, you'll notice that I am connected through Lone Star Digital Library, which is through my public library. All you have to do is click that plus sign that says add library, and you can type in your library card and um, join Libby. Um, this is through my public library, so I, I know that not all public libraries have access to this, but I do know it is a more popular one, um, and so I wanted to make sure that I talked about it. Um, you can search a multitude of ways. You can go, go to just added books, um, popular, random, available now. You can search by topic, um, and there's just so many different um ways that you guys can um, read its ebooks and audiobooks um i whenever i search i generally have um the um modifier on here to look for audio that's a lot of what i use libby for is audiobooks like you can see the two that i have right here um and then you can go and see how long your holds are waiting how long you have your books for all that kind of thing just like um you would in any type of um 
but, so the next app I want to talk about that you can access through um, your public library, or at least through my public library, is Cloud Library. Um, I actually like Cloud Library a little bit more than I like Libby, um, generally because I feel like not a lot of people use it as much as they do Libby. So there's a lot of titles on here that um, I can access easier and faster um, because there's not as much hold time on it. Um, because again, like I said, most people use Libby in my town apparently. So Cloud Library has a lot of titles to access that are um, ready right now. So if I click on Cloud Library, um, you can see that you can go to your account. Um, if I go to search um, um, in our state in Texas, we have a very popular reading list called the Texas Blue Bonnet. So if I wanted to read any of those, I could go there, recently added, children's titles, that kind of thing. Um, you can search lots of different ways on here. Again, this app has audiobooks and ebooks, but I generally have it set for audiobooks. Um, and then if you go to my books, um, you can see what you currently have checked out. Um, the history, it saves, um, like the books you've saved and the holds that you have. Um, and so I, um, it de like at the bottom right here, it does tell me, um, if I can renew one, um, I have one due in three days. Do I need to return it now, um, or listen to it? Um, so it definitely has like just the regular things that you would imagine from a, um, book app. Um, I will say that I can usually have up to 10 items at a time. So you'll see that this only, I have seven right now. If I were to add um, three more, that would probably be, that would be my max. Um, and so you can't have like an infinite number of books. Um, and just like with Libby, it'll tell you, you know, if, a wait time, um, if it's on hold. Some of my books um, that I have on Libby are like 26 weeks away. So again, that's why I usually go to Cloud Library first to look for a title because not as many people use this app as, um, as Libby. So um, if your public library has either of these apps, I highly recommend downloading them. And all you do is you log in with your library card um, and you have access to all of these um, titles. The next app that I want to briefly mention um, is uh, Sora. And um, Sora is an app that I use with my school. It's this little dude right here. Um, and so You'll notice if I go to sync, it says um, Miss Hunt, and um, because like I said, I do use it with my district. Um, however, um, you'll notice right here that um, I have some options on um, different ways I can, um, different libraries that I can access. So the Lone Star Digital Library that we were looking at earlier in uh, Libby, I can access it um, on Sora. So it's basically the same books, it's just in a different format. And that's something that um, we connected with our um, public library um, for all of our students that have access to Sora. Um, so like we'll buy books um, for, our, um, for our students um, and then if they have a library card, they can add their library card on here and access all of the titles at the public library too. So they're getting the ones that we have paid for um, through our district, and then they're also getting the ones from the public library. So um, that's another way that I read. If your district has Sora, it's a great um, platform, has lots of different titles, um, and then... Um, you can um, save them and uh, read them later, just like in any other app like that we were looking at before. Uh, but you'll see right here, these two titles, these are the ones that I had checked out in Libby. You'll see them here on Sora as well. So if your district, if you're a teacher or a librarian at a school that has Sora, think about connecting your public library, not just with you, but with your students. So they have even more titles um, to read on that platform. One of the apps that I really wanted to talk about, because um, a lot of people don't know about, um, is um, Hoopla. So if you live anywhere in Texas, um, you have access to the Houston Public Library. So if you are one of my Texas friends um, and you have a library card at any place in Texas, you can um, sign up for the Houston Public Library. Um, and you'll notice that um, they don't just have um, books, they have um, cookbooks and um, magazines and they have um, TV shows and movies and things like that. Um, I have it set to um you, you can go search by ebooks, you can search by audiobooks. Um, so lots of different options here. Um, it's one that I um, 
very much um, don't use as often because when um, so many people have access to it, um, it makes uh, the hold times really long. Um, the app isn't as user friendly as some of the others like Libby and Cloud Library. Um, so, but however, if I am looking for a book and I can't find it on either one of those platforms, a lot of times Hoopla um, will have it. So um, just so one to kind of keep in mind um, just to have another way to access um, books. So um, the next one I want to talk about is not necessarily um, an app or something that everyone can access and that is um, NetGalley. If you are a avid reader um, or even somebody that reads a little bit at the time, um, I highly recommend getting an account in NetGalley. And then there's a second one that we'll talk about in a little bit, and it's called uh, Edelweiss. Okay. Um, so these are for um, people that like to read and review books. Um, as somebody that's on a reading list committee um, for the state of Texas, um, it's come in handy a lot to get my hands on advanced readers copies. So if you've never um, been somebody to seek out ARCs, um, I highly recommend it. Um, you can have access to brand like new titles that aren't even published yet. Um, the only deal is that you have to write a review for them. Um, so you'll notice that my setting right here is set to librarian because that's what I am. Um, if you're a teacher, you can put that too. Um, if you're a blogger, um, anything like that, um, you can definitely um, set that. It, it does limit sometimes what they will let you read. Um, so because I'm a middle school librarian, anytime I ask to review adult titles, sometimes it's hit or miss, sometimes they approve it, sometimes they don't. Um, because like, um, like definitely for sure you have to uh, request unless they have it an automatic download. So whenever you log into NetGalley, you can go to find titles um, and you can look, um, they even have audiobooks now. Um, careful with those because sometimes it's like, um, um, like a very robotic voice because they don't have a person yet. They're just doing like text to speech reading. Um, so sometimes those don't really um, do it for me. I like an actual person to read it. Um, but if you don't care, then um, go for it. Lots of different audiobooks here. Um, this is a newer thing, um, picks for book clubs. So if you are a book club and you're looking for titles, um, definitely think about some of these. Um, and then I always go to the recently added books um, because I'm on here a lot to look for um, to look for different titles. Um, and so whenever I go to the recently added books, um, it takes me um, here and it's just a whole bunch. It's all different genres. Um, you can search um, on the side if you're looking for something in particular. Uh, but since I read um, a lot of different types of genres and ages, I just start going through. If I see one that I like, I will um, click on it. Let me see if I can find one that I haven't requested. <laughs> it's difficult. Um, if you are going through and then you find one, that you like. Um, let's see. Let's do this one. Um, oh, it says I have to sign in. Pretty sure I was when we got here. Um, so yeah, if I find one that I like, um, Oh, this looks cute. Um, this one is an auto approve. So once you've been doing this for a while, some of the publishers will set you to auto approve or they just have it to auto approve because they want as many people as possible to read and review and post about their title. Um, so this one, I would just be able to click read now. And then I, I have to tell them what appeals to me. Um, and blah, blah, blah. Let's just say it's all of these things. Um, and then I click read now. And then what happens is, is it takes me to the, um, the title book page and I have some options. I can read it on my NetGalley shelf, which is an app that you can download. Um, and you have to have your particular login so that you can access your titles. Um, I can send it to my Kindle, which is how I do it um, because I have the Kindle app on pretty much everything. Or you can click the download protected EPUB. Now, if you're looking for graphic novels, manga, things like that, generally, this is your only option um, because of the formatting. Um, and so if you click download, it will show up on your, um, desktop and you can read it on your computer. Um, that's why I highly uh, recommend the send to Kindle option. 
if you'll notice whenever I go to my shelf then there it is once I choose a way to send it to me um, then I'll be able to um, read it and this little notification will go away I can give feedback um, I can check feedback sent. I will tell you my, um, I download a lot of ARCs, whether it's for being on a reading list or for personal or for writing reviews. And so NetGalley keeps track of how many of the reviews you do write and it shows your percentage. My percentage is 50 right now, 50%. So that means half of the books that they send me, I actually get to read and write reviews for. Um, the lower your percentage is, um, sometimes it affects when you get books or not. Um, so just try to keep up with that. Um, that's definitely something I do every summer is I go through my arcs and I um, take the ones that I know I'm not going to read off and um, try to get that number up because it does affect it sometimes. Um, but NetGalley is just a great place to go um, if you are somebody that is um, an avid reader um, and want access to titles before they come out. Um, even if you're just getting like the most popular ones, like the ones that you're just like, you have a few authors that you're just dying to read. Um, I highly recommend um, getting on NetGalley uh, for that purpose um, because they have a lot of, a lot of titles. Um, sometimes you will get rejected for them and sometimes there's no rhyme or reason for it. Um, don't take it personally and <laughs> just keep writing those reviews, posting them. Um, and even if this is the only place you post, it like that's fine they want you to do it on goodreads they want you to do it on a different platform and social media if you have it um but definitely put it on here um and there's no you don't have to have like perfect grammar and like the best review ever um it just has to be a certain length um so that they know you're just not writing book was great you know so um yay netgalley all right, so let's talk about the lesser known Edelweiss. Um, Edelweiss works the same way NetGalley does. It gives you advanced readers copies of titles. Um, almost not 100% of theirs, however, are um, eBooks. Um, they don't really offer audiobook very much that I know of. Um, so, um, and this one really isn't as easy to find and as easy to use as NetGalley. However, I prefer Edelweiss. I feel like titles get here faster than they do on NetGalley. Um, I can, and so, and, and I usually get approved way more on here than I do on NetGalley. They don't really look for a percentage of the reviews that you write, so that never penalizes me. Um, so I just prefer it, but I do know that it is harder to figure out and uh, navigate. The website is not very user-friendly. I totally understand that. Um, so if you go to edelweiss.plus, um, it should come up, but there's also like this above, this is above the tree, above the tree line. That's like their official name, but everyone calls it Edelweiss. I don't know. It's really weird. Um, and so once you get here and you've created your account and everything, I always go up here to review copies because that's what I want to go to. Um, and since I'm on here pretty frequently, I have this set to um, since in the last three days because I can't remember if I was on here yesterday or not looking for a book. So I'm going to leave it on the last three days. You'll notice that they have options like right here. If it's green tab, I can click it and it'll automatically send it to my, my Kindle. I don't have to wait for, um, to be approved. Um, if it has the little hand up, then yes, I will have to read. Uh, I will have to wait to be approved. Um, but you'll notice that like, um, up here, there's a lot of different genres, just like in NetGalley when I'm searching. Um, and so, um, like this one right here, um, I requested the other day, um, because I'm on a graphic novel reading list and this looks like a super cute graphic novel. So I requested it. Um, and once I get approved, it can take anywhere from like a day to a couple of weeks to get approved or never. It just depends on when the publishers get on here and, um, and start approving things. Uh, so you'll notice just like to look through here. Um, this was a big one that dropped the other day, um, that a lot of people put in for, I saw on, um, social media. If you start following bookstagrammers, um, and book talkers, you'll notice that a lot of the things that they talk about, um, are getting arcs and getting advanced copies of books and, um, so that they can have their hands on them first and read and review them. And this was one that, um, 
a lot of people have been waiting on and I was able to get approved for as well. Um, it looks adorable. Cannot wait to read it. And then when I review it, I'll post my review here. I'll also post it on my Instagram, on my Twitter. Sometimes I'll do a TikTok about it um, or a Snapchat uh, video. So um, just lots of different ways to share um, that you have read the book and um, what you think about it. Um, and so when, if I see one that I like, I can click that button and I can, um, I can request it. And like I said, it just kind of depends. Um, all of these go to my Kindle. There are some, like I said, with graphic novels, manga, um, that you have to read on a computer or on a specific, um, like Adobe digital, um, like down here, I have Adobe digital editions. That's how I have to read a lot of my, um, graphic novels because of the formatting. Um, so just kind of, um, be aware of that, that some of them won't have a Kindle option. You're going to have to read it a different way. Um, it doesn't happen that often. Most of them you can read on your Kindle and you just have to get it set up. So, um, highly recommend, um, Edelweiss and as well as NetGalley for advanced reader copy. Uh, so recently, um, my, um, Instagram has, um, my follower numbers have gone up. Um, and so I'm finally at, uh, that area where you can start requesting to be an influencer, um, whether it's with a business or with publishers to get either advanced reader copies or just physical copies of newer books. Um, or digital copies um, and, and things like that so that you will read and review them for them publishers and the authors. Um, if you do not follow Reader Haven, um, this is Taylor. She um, did this, this blog post about how to be a bookstagram influencer. Um, and it was very helpful to me. Um, it gives a lot of the links that I needed um, to like send out information, um, to these different publishing houses, um, to request to be an influencer. And this is where they will send you titles for free, um, with the hopes that you will review it for your blog, for your social media accounts and things like that. Um, you will have to provide your social media stats. Um, so the one I have the highest following on is Instagram, um, for my bookstagram account, um, which is like 90% of what I post on there. Um, and then also my Twitter is, um, um, about the same uh, as my Instagram. So I post on there as well. Um, and then thirdly is my TikTok. Um, I also post on Snapchat and um, other platforms, but not as frequently as I do on those top three. Um, so you'll have to um, kind of share your stats. Um, if you're somebody that you think would be approved for an influencer um, situation, it has all the different ways you can do it to receive ARCs, um, or new titles. Um, sometimes they'll just send you a newsletter and say, pick which ones you want. Um, so if ever you'll see me tag, um, a, um, if you'll see me tag a publisher or something like that, like thanks for the book. Generally, this is how I got it. One that is not listed on this website that I just recently was approved for is Get Underlined. Um, I read a lot of their titles and I just like was really feeling their vibe. Like every book they've been publishing, I've loved. And so I just reached out and I saw that they had an influencer program. So if there is an imprint or a publisher that you really, really love, um, I highly recommend going to their um, Instagram, looking at their link tree, seeing if they have an influencer program and applying for it um, and just kind of telling them why you're, you're interested in that. Um, so this is still another way to get free books and free titles. Um, and then you, what you have to give back is a review, um, an honest one um, generally. Um, and and make sure that you are, are fulfilling your side of the bargain if they send you a free title. So highly recommend um, joining an influencer program for free. So giveaways are a great way, obviously, to win free titles. Um, you'll notice that I'm on Goodreads right now. Um, not everyone is a fan of Goodreads. Um, they are owned by Amazon. They have a lot of ads, which sucks. Um, but I prefer them over Storygraph. I used Storygraph all last year. I love their analytics. I really do. Um, however, it just doesn't match what I get out of Goodreads as far as the people that I'm following, um, the, the books that I'm seeing, um, and the give giveaways that they offer. So, um, 
it, the more people that you follow, the more titles that you mark as you want to read, the more that Goodreads will send you emails saying that there is time for a giveaway for that author or for that title. Um, so you'll notice right here when you log in that it is giveaways month. And so if I click on that, it's going to take me to their giveaway page. You can just start scrolling and find one that looks good to you. Um, and then you can click enter giveaway. Um, you just have to confirm your address. Um, I have never been very successful with giveaways on, on, uh, Goodreads. However, I know so many people that have like literally I'll see TikToks or, um, Instagram reels all the time of people that saying they just started entering giveaways on Goodreads and that they have got like 20 bucks in the last month or something ridiculous like that. Um, so good on you. If you are a Goodreads lucky person that wins all the time. Um, I, however, have not been, um, as lucky. However, if you don't, enter, you can't win. So anytime I see one pop up, I will enter it, especially if it's a book that I'm looking forward to, um, or it's a title that I have wanted to read and haven't had time for, or one that I did read and I really want a copy of it. Um, so I'll definitely enter for that. Um, and um, while we're on here, I just want to talk about other giveaways. Um, the more authors you follow, either on Twitter or Instagram or TikTok, um, the more chances you'll see that they are doing a giveaway. A lot of times they'll give away like um, advanced reader copies of their books, or they have a bunch of books that they didn't get to give away when the book launched. And so they'll do that then. Um, sometimes they'll buy other authors or they'll have gotten other authors books and they'll give those away too. Barbara D is great about that. Um, on Twitter. So if you um, follow authors, you'll get to see a lot of chances for giveaways. Um, the more bookstagram author, um, like creators you'll follow, the more chances you'll have for giveaways for them too. A lot of times they'll do like a gift card or they'll do like a stack of books. Um, so the more people you're following, the more chances you'll see for giveaway opportunities. Um, I've won a bunch on Twitter, on Instagram. It's just the more that you look for it, um, the more you can have the chance to win. Um, um, and then we'll talk about a few other ways that you can enter giveaways through different publishing companies. Another um, website that you can subscribe for daily deals or also just for their newsletter to see um, what giveaways they have is a bookriot.com. So if you go down here to the bottom, you'll see they're doing giveaways um, for free stuff right now. And um, they also have daily deals. If you are wanting to buy a cheap um, ebook or audiobook, they'll usually have those on here too. Um, it's just a great um, website um, and I subscribe to it. So I'm always seeing when and entering for giveaways that they have. Um, I will also say that um, Penguin Teen, if you sign up for theirs or just like Penguin uh, and you can check all the different newsletters you want from them, they do giveaways as well. Um, so just um, kind of keep that in mind. Um, if you are somebody that is looking for a lot of different giveaways, publishers um, tend to do that. Um, and then lastly, I just want to throw out another free way to read is Wattpad, W-A-T-T-P-A-D. It is an app um, where anyone can post their stories. Um, and sometimes you'll find um, you have to weed through some stuff, um, but you'll find that there is actually some good books on there. A lot of um, popular titles that are now published came from Wattpad. Um, if you're an aspiring writer, um, I highly recommend posting your stuff there. Um, and then that way you can maybe get noticed. Um, people can start downloading your stuff. Um, you can get feedback from other readers. Um, so it's a great way to kind of get some free, free reading or, um, get some free feedback if you're a writer. So that's the last way that I have that you can read for free. Um, next up is a way to read for cheap. All right, ways to read for cheap. Let's start with book of the month. Um, I'm sure everyone has heard about book of the month. It's not anything new. It's been around for a long time. I have been doing it since like before anyone really was hearing about it, um, because someone, um, saw it online and recommended it to me. And for a long time, I would get one book a month for nine 99. Um, and then I felt like, um, their selections weren't so great. So I stopped using them. And then about like during the pandemic, obviously, um, to get more access to books, I looked into signing up again and haven't stopped. Like, honestly, 
I struggle each month to pick because I feel like there's so many good choices. I'm also a fan of like the Reese Witherspoon book club. Um, and so anytime any of her books are on there, I will grab it because I feel like she does such a great job or her team does such a great job of picking what books they have each month. Um, you'll notice like if you go to the link in my bio, you can get a code um, to get your first month free. Um, they have a code right now to get um, your first book for $9.99. Um, I am not only a member, but I am up here where it says BFFs. Um, and that's because I do the book of the month and then I usually do two add-ons, which is the max. And I've done that for months and months. And so once you um, become a BFF, they start sending you swag with your stuff. Um, but I honestly, I can't beat it. It's brand new titles. Some of them haven't even been released yet when you get them. And it's $10 and they are like hard copies. Let me see if I can find them. Yeah, they are like hard copies. They have a book of the month logo at the top, which means like they're a little bit taller. Um, and then they have it like on the front. They send you a bookmark with it. It's a special edition. On the back, it tells you the month and the year that you picked it. Um, and and so I just, um, it ships really fast. Um, once you pick it, it's usually a couple of days later, it's at your door. Um, so I highly recommend Book of the Month. Um, and now what they're doing is they are doing more than just five choices. Usually for like, since I've been a part of Book of the Month for years and years, it's only been five. Um, this month there were seven and they're hinting that that is going to be something that continues um, and that they'll have even more options. And then you can even go into their back catalog and pick books from years ago if you've ever wanted it. Um, so highly recommend um, book of the month. Um, like I said, link is in my bio. If you're interested in signing up, you can always skip a month if you don't like any of the choices um, and come back the next time. Um, they're really good about that. So it's my favorite subscription um, service to use um, just because it's very easy and the titles are really good. All right, let's talk about Scribd. I absolutely love Scribd. This is something I actually wish Audible would do, um, but they don't. <laughs> so Scribd is um, an audiobook. Um, they actually have ebooks too, ebooks, magazines, podcasts, that kind of thing. I use it for audiobooks though. Um, is a place that you guys can go and it can be um, unlimited access to in their entire collection, um, which I absolutely love. That's something that I. Um, felt like was missing, um, from my, um, monthly, like I have, and I'll talk about those in a second, um, subscriptions where I get one audio credit a month because audiobooks are so expensive, right? Um, so I have a couple of ones that I pay for, but this one is $9.99 and it is unlimited access to their entire audiobook collection. And it's not just a few titles, like it is a lot of titles, a lot of popular titles, um, new books on here. Um, and then, I do want to talk about the only downside and I have reached out to them and I've put it on Twitter. Um, I read at a minimum of three times on an audiobook, um, uh, three, three speed. Okay. Um, and the only way I, if I listened on Scribd on their website, they go up to three speed. Um, if I listen on the app, it's only two. And for me, that is very, very slow. And I know that's not the case for everybody. And I don't want to say that, but for me, I have a goal for myself to read one book a day. And the way that I do that is I read uh, multiple books at a time in multiple different formats so that I'm finishing one, at least one a day so that I can write my reviews and stuff like that. Um, and audiobooks are the only way I've been able to do that. Um, stay to my one a day thing since I started doing it during the pandemic. So if I want to continue, then I need to be able to read at the speed that I need to read at. And there are so many amazing titles on here that I have. These are titles that I've saved and I just want to read all of them. But like, I can't because I read Gallant this week at two speed and I finished way later than I would have. It took me two days to read that when usually it would have taken me one because it's not a very long book. Um, and so I, I highly recommend Scribd for everything that they do. I'm just waiting. And they wrote back saying that they've heard that before, that they wish, you know, that, I mean, in every Libby, um, Cloud Library, um, 
the Houston Public Library, that one goes up to like 2.5. Um, but um, an Audible, all of them at least go up to 3, if not 3.5, which is what I prefer. Um, so for me, that is the only downside to Scribd. Otherwise, it's $9.99 for unlimited audiobooks. And guys, audiobooks are expensive. So for, to have that access um, is pretty amazing. And that's all that I'm waiting for with this website. And then I will probably get rid of any of my other audiobook subscriptions because this would definitely fulfill every um, need that I had. If you're interested in trying Scribd, um, there is a link in my bio for that to get some money off for your first month. All right. The next service that I pay for is Kindle Unlimited. Um, Kindle Unlimited is only eBooks. Um, sometimes when you download the Kindle Unlimited book, you'll also get the Audible narration. So that's kind of cool. Um, but uh, for the most part, it is um, the Kindle Unlimited books are um, only ebooks. And um, it, it, it's not like the brand brand new titles. I, you know, I will say some authors that like self publish or publish through Amazon, like Colleen Hoover will offer their books on um, Kindle Unlimited, which is so cool. Um, I get through Kindle Unlimited. I want to say it's like 14 dollars and $14.99 a month, something like that. Um, and you get 20 titles that you can swap in and out for, right? Um, so um, that's pretty good. Um, I obviously don't read 20 at a time, but do I always have um, 20 in my queue ready to go? Yes. Um, so if you are somebody that loves to read um, eBooks, I read on the Kindle app, but some people have Kindle readers and um, it's great for that because the formatting is perfect. Um, then I highly recommend using Kindle Unlimited. Um, I don't use it as much as I used to before I got obsessed with audiobooks. Um, so just kind of um, decide, you know, what is your favorite format for reading and, and decide if this is something that you want to add to your monthly um your monthly bills. All right, let's get going with Libro.fm. A lot of people don't know about this one, which is like one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to make this video. I get this um, question a lot, like um, about how I have access to um, advanced reader copy audiobooks, um, and it's and it's through Libro FM. So there is a free part of this, and there's also a paid part of this. Um, so, um. Libra Offer is super cool because unlike Audible <laughs> and Amazon, giant, giant conglomerate, um, they work um, pretty much with indie bookstores. And I love that. Um, they support your local um, bookstores in um, any of your towns and things like that. Um, and so the, I love that they do that. Um, bookshop.org is also another one that works with bookshop, um, with local bookstores and gives money to them too. So Highly recommend shopping local. Um, so every time you use a credit, it splits the profits with a local bookstore. You choose which one you want it to go to um, so that it supports in your community. Okay. Um, and I will say they're doing this cool offer right now, which I did not know about. Love that. Um, there's also a link in my bio if you wanted to get some money off to start a membership. So um, let's talk about the membership part, which is the paid part. Um, I get monthly credit um, through Libro FM. Um, if you go to membership, um, it's $14.99 um, and you get an audiobook credit a month. So mine popped up yesterday. Um, so then I get to use it on any of the titles that they have. Obviously, 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers. And that is true. They have a lot of great titles, brand new books, brand new authors, that kind of thing. So it's great. Um, so I do pay that every month for an audiobook credit through Libro.fm. Now, the free part, if you are a teacher or a librarian, you can sign up for their um, free arcs that they send out at the first of the month. So um, at the beginning of every month, um, it is time for the librarian arcs. Now I will say if you're a teacher, um, there's maybe like 10. If you're a librarian, it's something like 40 to 50. Okay. So they obviously want librarians reading the newest um, books so that they could purchase them for their, um, their libraries and things like that. Um, and it's a wide range of genres. It's from kids all the way up to adult, um, fiction, nonfiction, lots of different, um, 
you know, series, uh, just, I mean, like a lot of different choices every month. And I will show you the, um, March choices. Right so now. like I was saying, um, Libro.fm is, um, one of my favorite apps to use. Um, whenever you get on here, um, and you go to explore as for, after you have been verified as a, um, librarian or as a teacher, you can get their ALCs every month. So if I go to see all, you can see the March ones. And like I I said um there are a good amount um i got all my rage from here um i also read the inheritance book which is an american royals prequel um the unsinkable greta james was a book of the month choice and i did not pick it because i knew i had the audiobook in here um nina liqueur this is her first adult novel um, so like I said, lots of brand new um, titles. Right now I'm reading The Younger Wife by Sally Hepworth. If you haven't read her before, amazing mystery thriller author, um, kind of in the vein of Leanne Moriarty. Um, so like I said, up here we have some poetry, some kid, nonfiction, um, lots of different options. And every month there is a new set of um, ALCs for librarians. So definitely worth it to get yourself signed up. Um, and they're free, like I said. So, um, you know, it's great to have and review and post um, for or to add to your library collection um, in your school or the public library. All right, next is thrift books. If I'm looking for a um, book to have, um, for my collection, sometimes for my library, um, I will go to thrift books. Now, this is not for brand new books that just came out. These are for books that have been out for a while and you are getting at a cheaper rate. Um, the cool thing about um, thrift books is as you buy, you earn points um, and you can cash in for free books. Um, so I have one free book earned from the last time that I um, purchased. Um, and then like you can see as it fills up, I'll know that I'll have another one or whatever. Um, I tend to buy books on here um, like for personal use that I want to add to my collection that have been out for a while. Um, but I feel like, and some of them are used and some of them are new and it'll tell you their condition, like they're in average condition or brand new perfect condition. Um, so if you're somebody that, you know, only wants brand new books, you will have to pay a little bit more on here. I personally don't care um, if they are used, spine cracked, that kind of thing. Um, that's fine with me. Um, so whenever, and they do ship seven to 10 days business, you know, usually. So it's not fast like Amazon, but um, I will say there's a lot of great titles if you're looking to add to your um, collection, maybe fill up a series that, or a book that you have never really, you know, knew you wanted, but haven't had time to purchase. It is better than shopping on Amazon. All right. Next we have book outlet. Um, like thrift books, book outlet is very, um, is cheap depending on what you're looking for. Um, I think thrift books is cheaper as far as like the titles. They're generally four to six dollars on paperbacks, hardbacks. Mm six to 10, you know, that kind of thing. Um, however, with book outlet, um, they can be a little pricier, um, but they always have a deal going. I get emails from all the time. It's like buy two, get one free. 15% um, site wide right now. Um, I get codes from them a lot. And there is a link in my bio if you would like $5 off your first order, um, that kind of stuff. Um, with this also, you get to earn points um, to cash in. Um, it takes longer to earn points on here than it does on thrift books. Um, obviously this is a bigger outfit thrift books. You're buying from like independent sellers, whereas in book outlet, it's just a big chain. Um, but they do have newer titles. I will say, um, than thrift books for cheaper. So, um, the cousins, this came out maybe a year and a half ago, 747. You know, Tokyo Ever After, the sequel is coming out soon. This one is also a Reese book club pick. Highly recommend this title. Um, 781. So, you know, um, and these are mostly hardback. There are obviously paperback. The cheaper it is, you'll notice paperback. Um, but yeah, like 143, 219, those are good prices. Um, so you can get um, a good amount of books for your classroom or for your library. I have bought 
books off of Book Outlet before for giveaways. Um, I've done it for um, like for my personal library and for my school library. So definitely think about Book Outlet if you're looking for um, some good books, um, newer titles that aren't as expensive. And now for my favorite way to get cheaper books, um, and that is through firstbook.org. First Book is an amazing organization that um, allows you to sign up if you are a teacher or an educator um, that is at a Title I school or an eligible Title I school or your school used to be Title I. <laughs> lots of different, you're a healthcare provider, lots of different things like that. So make sure you read the rules of eligibility. Um, and then when you sign up, there's all these different places that can sign up. Um, you will have access to um, a lot of different um options through first book so let's talk about that first book allows you to get not only books but you can get classroom supplies um flashcards you know study guides things like that they have free resources um because it is um, an organization that is is very active in the community um they have a lot of different activities you can get and then the book bank which is really cool if you're looking for multiple titles of one particular book um they have very cheap. Um, and so that's, that's definitely the biggest plus to me about, um, first book is how cheap it is. Uh, so I always go down to the new arrivals and I go to see new arrivals. Um, these books you'll notice like Omar rising came out like a week ago. Um, and it's uh, available for six seventy five. That is not what it is on Amazon. It's not what it is on Barnes and Noble. It's definitely cheaper. Um, they are really great about, about not just putting books on here, but, but getting books that are, um, uh, diverse and inclusive and promote empathy and, and things like that. So you'll see a lot of great titles like that. I know that Project Lit works really close with First Book, um, and they have everything from elementary age all the way up into young adult, um, um, because it is for kids. So they're not going like into the adult level. Um, they have, um, English and Spanish, Spanish titles. Um, you can go to the book bank and you can see, um, that you can get like 48 copies of Hoot. You know, it just depends on what you need for your classroom or for your school. If you're trying to do one, one book, one school, um, you can get, um, a bunch of these, these titles, um, be, um, careful. Some of them, um, like, I think this one, let's see. Um, one of my, my campus, uh, uh bought, um, like 80 copies of a book, um, and it was the mini, yes, it's the mini paperback books. So if you see a tie like this, um, be very careful. These books were this big. Um, and obviously we could not use them in the classroom because they needed to be able to highlight and take notes and all that kind of thing. So they were very little. So yes, you're like, oh yes, 88 books and it's, you know, $48. That's awesome. Be careful to look at that. Um, and just know if that won't meet the needs of your campus. Um, so, um, and then first books, they'll send out emails, um, randomly to say, we got a donation from someone use this code to get, you know, 15% off, 30% off, whatever it is. Um, and sometimes it'll be like, it's, um, African American history month. Let's go ahead and, and any book you buy that features an African American or black character, um, or author, you can get percentage off. So it's, it's very cool, um, of what they do here. Um, free shipping over $25. Um, so generally, um, once a month, once every other month, I will put in an order um, for usually an upwards of $100 through first book um, for titles for my library because I'm not going to be able to get them that fast as, as fast as I get them from first book. And I'm also not going to be able to get them as cheap as I am as, on first book. So for me, it is worth it. Um, just kind of, you know, take a look, see what um, works for you. But I highly recommend first book. Um, it is such a great organization. All right, let's talk about some of the more pricier ways to get books um, that I um, either pay for myself <laughs> or people have bought me subscriptions for, things like that. Um, so let's start with Chirp. Um, Chirp is a way to read um, audiobooks. Um, there is no subscription fee. Um, you're basically paying for the audiobook, but at a cheaper rate. 
there is a link in my bio if you want to get a give it a try. Um, I have not been able to find a whole lot of titles that I'm willing to spend this amount of money on because uh, a lot of the audiobooks I'm looking for are newer titles and I know that they're going to be a little bit more expensive. I would just usually use my code on Audible um, or my code on Libra.fm um, for my monthly credit um, for one of these titles rather than spend $15.99, $14.99 or I'd get the actual book. So just consider um, Chirp. They do have cheaper ones. You'll see $1.99, $3.99, but right now they're not a whole lot of books that I want to read. Um, but that's just me. So, you know, take a look and see if, if maybe Chirp is, is right for you. Um, and then obviously we're going to have to, we're going to have to go to Audible. Now, I understand that Audible is not everyone's cup of tea because it is associated with Amazon. Um, however, a lot of times, not a lot of times, but there are times when there is a book that I want to listen to on audio um, because it's so long um, or, you know, I don't have the time to sit and read the physical or the ebook. Um, and um, they only offer it on Audible. So, for example, um, Sarah J. Mass's new series, The Crescent, city. Um, those are only available in audio. So I had to, I have to purchase them on audio. So I spend on audible. I, I pay for the two a month credit, which mm, it's a little pricey. It's, it's about 30 bucks, um, a month, um, for me to get two credits for them. Like I've already spent one this month. Um, and I still have one to go. Um, when it's this much, you want to be very careful about what you're picking. Um, and then um, you can see my next credit. A credit is available on April 12th. Um, I will say it was kind of cool. I tweeted out um, a few weeks ago um, that I had read a book on Audible and really enjoyed it. And Audible reached out to me and they were like, hey, here's um, a code. You can get six credits. Um, for, for tweeting out to us. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so I was able to get a bunch of credits that way. Um, two weeks ago, they had a great deal going on where it was like every auto, every audio book through Audible was like half off or something. And that's worth it to me when I can get, you know, brand new titles um, for, you know, it was like $7, $8 and, and as an audio book. So that was really cool. Um, so you just got to kind of look for those. Um, if you're not wanting to have the two credits a month, you can do just one credit a month. Um, it's not as pricey uh, that way. Um, I think it's like 20 bucks maybe. Um, and you can give as gifts, you know, that whole kind of thing. But there, I will say Audible has the biggest amount of audio books out there. Um, which I kind of hate, <laughs> but, um, if I want to read as much as I do, I kind of have to get it from all the different sources. So, um, I do use, um, audio, I do use audible, um, a good amount and they let you read really, really fast. So I do like that. You can also buy three extra credits. Let me see if I can get into that. Um, and this would be 3441, um, for, you know, it's $11 per credit. So if you're feeling like you really need some extra books on a month, going on a road trip, even in the plane, that whole thing, and you need some extra ones, um, that's great. If you have um, Prime or um, that kind, or you're an Audible member, they have free um, Audible books, and some of them are really good. Like I've gone through and read a lot of the YA ones. So even if you're not like an Audible like member, you can still, I think, get in there and read some of their free titles. So um, definitely something to think about um, for those of you that do like audiobooks. Um, so, you know, if you don't want to pay, you can definitely just access their free catalog. And lastly, I just want to say that there are some other ways to buy physical books. If you are um, following a lot, any bookstagram accounts or you're subscribed to um, like book talk, you're active on there. Or if you are get emails from like Target, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, places like that, you'll notice that a couple of times a year, they will do a buy three or buy two, get three free or something like that. They'll do like, you get three books for the price of two. That's it. Um, or, um, two books for the price of one. Like they will do little, um, giveaway things like not giveaway, but like deals like that on Amazon. And generally when Amazon's doing it, usually Target's doing it too. And then 
then recently Barnes & Noble did a big one um, as well. I don't have a Barnes & Noble anywhere near me. Um, and there is a way to do it online, but I think you can use an educator account if you go to Barnes & Noble. And since there's not one close to me, I generally don't. Um, and so I'll usually take advantage of those deals when they're happening on Amazon or on um, Barnes and Noble, I mean, um, on Target. And so you'll just see like, um, underneath a title, it'll say like buy two, but I, you can't always like be looking for that. So I just kind of pay attention to, um, the people that I follow on bookstagram, um, the people that I follow on book talk. And when they start talking about it, then I'm like, okay, yes, the deal's going on. And usually like, um, for sure they do it around November time because of Christmas. Um, so just kind of keep an eye out for those what did I miss? Like, I feel like I've been taking notes on this for a couple of weeks to make this video. Um, and I know I missed something. Um, and it may not even be one that I know about. So if you are um, an active, an avid reader um, that knows that I missed <laughs> um, a, a, some app or a website or an, a deal, a way that you can read in a different way, please let me know. I'm always looking. Um, I'm always trying to find different ways to read for free or for cheap, um, but definitely using my public library. Um, I use my school library a lot. Um, so just kind of please let me know and, and hopefully... Um, I, I shared something that you didn't know about um, before because uh, that was my goal. I get this question all the time and I'd like to have a video to just be like, see, this is how you can get access to all of these things. So let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed or if you have a question about anything I shared today. Bye.